So what does this moment mean to you being able to finally host NCAA tournament games in the camp? I mean, it means so much because remember the first year we didn't play because of COVID. That would have been a year we could host um, a, probably a two or three seed. And then COVID happened, so that took um, Dominique and Lucia and all the um, TT, everybody who kind of helped build this program. They didn't get to go to the tournament. And then after that, fast forward, we go, then COVID's still happening, who no, no one would ever have thought. And then we're locked down in the bubble, so then we couldn't host again. So to host um, this week is amazing. I think it was a great feeling knowing that we were going to go to the tournament, but then the, the hard part was not knowing if we would host. But I think this is a, the perfect venue. We have some of the best fans in the country. And so um, to be able to have the chance, hopefully, cross my fingers, to be able to um, sell out McHale and play at home, I mean, that's a huge advantage for the first couple rounds. So I, I'm really excited, and I'm excited to bring those teams here. People can see what this college town is like, and it's great on so many in so many different areas. It helps our program. Um, what's Sam feeling about playing her sister? I'm really excited. It was funny. They were tweeting at each other. Um, you know, easy for Sam's family. They don't have to travel all over, right, to just two different spots. But for Sam, it's special. I think it's a good story. Um, you know, it, it's just fun. I think that's going to be fun for her. I think, um, you know, Jade's, their roles are a little bit different, but just exciting. And, you know, it's probably hard to not share secrets with your sister, right? Mm -hmm. So I said, Sam, don't share any of our secrets. She's like, no, I want to beat him. You know, so I think it's going to be fun. How would you describe your, your relationship with Lindy? Uh, well, I don't, I don't know her that well. I just, um, you know, definitely a friendship. Met her when she was an assistant at, um, at Stanford. And Tara always hires great people. So just kind of got to know her and just talked to her a little bit on the road. And I think she's doing a tremendous job at UNLV. Just has really turned things around. And, you know, she's up and coming, great young coach. And so I, I love that. I love seeing females and former players successful. So. What was your reaction when she said that she took a play out of your playbook for that three-pointer? I was like, wow, that helped you. That helped us to her win a game, so that's good. Um, no, I thought it was really cool, and I think what, what shows just kind of person she is, that she would even say that. I think most people wouldn't, wouldn't have said, they wouldn't have said where they got it from or what they did. I thought that that was really something that uh, you know, I respect, and she's a good person and a good coach. So it'll be, it'll be fun, fun series for sure. And how's Kate feeling? She's great. Um, she's um, not limited at all in practice and full scrimmaging everything and she has been for a few days so just happy she's finally back and and healthy and uh, ready to go and she'll, have, she'll be wearing a brace but that's just for safety and she's you know, gotten her win back she sprinted a lot this week so I think she's ready to go and we're ready to have her back for sure. And what does this week look like for you? And when do you, I think uh, Susie told me that you guys will be staying in a hotel mm -hmm. like the other teams. When does all of that start? To that'll happen? start, actually, we haven't gotten that far. Um, but when we talked about it before, that'll start on Thursday, or on Friday. Because originally I just anticipated us playing on Friday. I don't know why. Everybody was like, you're going to play on Friday probably. I was like, okay. It's funny how you listen to all the rumors and all the stuff's going around. And then all the brackets said, you're going to play UNLV. And I was like, oh, we're probably not. Because the brackets, like, it seems like they always change in the, at the last second. But, um, you know, we were preparing, which was good. But I think just kind of keeping it like a routine, able to control some things and eat together and just stay as a team. So I think it'll be fun, a good experience. I actually don't have any idea where we're staying or anything because I haven't even asked that far. It's, I think, you know, your mindset's just like getting in, who you're playing. It's like everything else is like, okay, that's, I'm not even thinking about it, but so I have no idea. It's and, been, it's been and fast. And with UNLV is, you know, head coach, I mean, she obviously has a little bit of past 12 experience and has matched up as an assistant against mm -hmm. you guys. Is there anything that she's done or the players on that team that you're kind of looking at, trying to prepare for a little more? No, because, I mean, Tara was the head coach. So um, I think that, but knowing that she was in Tara's system, I'm, I'm sure she's a really good coach, and Tara doesn't hire people that aren't good coaches. So. I think um, I would anticipate defensively very similar, but just very different teams. So um, I think that it's going to be a good game. I'm, I'm sure just like everybody, you share information with friends. And um, you know, I think that nowadays you can just go to Synergy and you can watch everything you need. So whether you get a scout from someone or you don't, it, it, like it's so irrelevant nowadays because you can click on Synergy and say, you know, what does this team do well? And it like ranks everything. So. Um, it is what it is. Everybody knows everybody at this point, and if you're good, everybody really knows you. And there's only 68 teams to know, so um, just I think that for us, it's a new season. It's one game at a time. We're not looking at the bracket. We're looking at UNLV, and um, you know our our goal is to go in and you know do our best we can against that first team. 
the Pac-12 got six in, and then um, she, the head of the committee said UCLA is one of the four and kind of stand by if there's COVID problems. Mm -hmm. So what? What do you see about the conference? What do you have to say about what? Um, well, I think, and I think I counted. If I counted correctly, SEC had had quite a bit too. So. Um, I think that our conference is one of the best in the country. I think we're down a little bit this year. I think that's a reality, I think for multiple reasons. Um, I think typically if you look at the history of our conference and the teams, I mean, Oregon State's a really good team that had some injuries this year to key players, a starter, just like when we lost Kate, we lost some games. Um, you know, Taylor was a big loss for them. I think they're definitely a tournament team. And then UCLA had a lot of injuries, a lot of COVID. They're usually a tournament team. And then I think the other team that, is right there is, you know, ASU at different times. I think um, they're usually kind of, you know, like I think my first year they were in the, in the tournament. So those are teams that potentially had been, I think, but this year, Oregon State talent wise and who they have, um, if they were healthy, is in the tournament for sure as a pretty high seat, I think. And then UCLA not having injuries is in the tournament. So that would have been two more teams. So I think that's typically how our, our league is. And I think right now it's just the SEC is doing that, getting those numbers, which, I mean, shows the strength of their conference right now. But next year we'll be healthy. Um, you know, all of our teams are getting better. We're getting better. We have a great class coming in. UCLA has the best class right now um, with Kiki Rice coming in, so they're going to definitely be a tournament team. Um, Oregon State has some really good kids coming in. And, I mean, like USA kids, like top kids that are going to be impactful. So, like, I think we all should, none of us are getting worse. Stanford's getting better. All the teams that are in are getting better. So um, I think next year it'll be, we'd have two or three more teams then. Going through injuries in the transitional phase right now as a conference to get six in, what does that just say about the conference in general? It says a lot. I think um, if I'm another conference or going to a tournament, I wouldn't want to play four, five, six, or seven from the Pac-12. Um, I think that that's more dangerous. Those four to eight are more dangerous, in my opinion, than SEC's four to eight. Um, that's my opinion. Um, so I think that I, I think there's really good coaching in the Pac-12, and I think there also is in the SEC, Big 12, ACC, all that stuff. But I'm just talking about the Pac-12, and um, you know I think we'll be number one again next year. And I think this year we're not. That's the reality. But we're we're pretty close, and when we're healthy. But just like everybody, if the SEC's banged up, everybody goes through the same thing. But remember, uh, SEC's adding some teams next year, so that's going to be a really a really tough conference. What do you remember about playing in the NCAA tournament here when you played? You know, it's funny. I didn't remember that. Like, gosh, I mean, I was like, I, because I honestly remember, I remember playing Connecticut somewhere on the East Coast. I didn't remember the first two games at home. But, I mean, it's been, like, it's been since, like, 1998, so it's been a, a long time. Um, and I tweeted, like, this was our first time, because I thought it was our first time. I knew it was our second time hosting, but I thought, because when Pokey was here, um, Arizona hosted, but wasn't in the tournament. And then Adam reminded me, I was like, I don't remember that. And then someone tweeted it. I was like, oh, yeah, you're right, second time. But I did not remember that. I think, um, yeah, I don't know. I didn't remember that. I, had, I did not remember. I don't recall that. And I think Adam told me, oh, you had 30 points in the second game. I was like, I don't know who we played. I don't, I don't remember at all. So probably, who did we play? I remember playing Virginia. I don't remember that being the tournament because I remember Demaya Walker was on a team. I don't remember that being a tournament, so. Yeah, let me, that's mom brain probably. Like when you have a couple of kids, you forget everything, I guess. I don't know. But I need to look that up. And who was the first game? Come on. Yeah, so I didn't remember that Virginia game was here. I thought that was the way. But Demaya Walker, so we're still friends. And actually, she, um, she's coaching right now, AAU. But anyways, besides the point. What did you think when you saw the men come out and then you guys were able to get a different day so you're not going against them? Which is good, I think. Um, you know, I'm, I'm curious to see that how, how that plays out. I think you can ideally go here in San Diego, but not that realistic. Um, so I think that, I, I don't think that's great for us, just because logistically and a lot of the fans are the same. But I think in one sense, a lot of fans are different. So I think, um, I don't know, I'm curious. I still, I still feel like um, we can sell out despite that. Even if, if you know, 5,000 people go there, I really feel like in Tucson we could still sell out. Because I don't think the overlap is like half. You know, I don't, I don't think that. So um, hopefully, I mean, it's a huge home court advantage playing at home in the NCAA tournament. And I think it's a huge opportunity for the school. It's a huge, um, it's just if you're a women's basketball fan or a basketball fan, you can see some really good teams. And I think that's, a, I mean, for like 35 bucks to watch 
all the games, I, I think that's a great opportunity. It doesn't happen often here. We're talking a couple times in, I don't know, like a lot of years. So I, I think it's a good thing. I, I, we need to sell out Mikhail. Um, we need to really have support and, and really make this and show everybody around the country what it's like here. And I think that's something, um, you know, we're in the top eight in attendance overall. So I know the NCAA is different, but just, just to show what it's like and how this is a basketball town, um, I think is a good opportunity for us on a national stage, which isn't promised every year. It's not easy. And for you, with, with you know, obviously the men's team in number one seed, you guys have performed, what does it mean to have both basketball programs, you know, especially the women's team hosting for the first time since you were a player? What does that mean for Arizona and what the program is? It were? means a lot. I think um, if you look at historically, besides when I was a player, both teams aren't really good at the same time. And I think um, the men have been incredible this year. I think no one expected them to be this good. Everybody expected them to be good. And I think um, Tommy Lloyd's done a great job. And everybody's super excited. And I think the fact that they're also excited for us. And then you have both. And if you're a basketball fan, like you kind of double dip. And I think it's great for the program to have, um, I think it's a great problem to have, oh, are they gonna stay in San Diego or stay in Tucson? I think they're go to Tucson, go to San Diego, stay in Tucson. I think that's a great problem to have with two good teams. I think it's a completely different situation. If we're on the road, then nobody's going to really go if it's really far. And, um, you know, the men are in San Diego. Those are different things. So this is a great problem to have. You want your other sports to be successful. And this is a basketball town. I think, um, you know, it's going to become a football town because I know Jed Fish is going to do a great job. Um, but I think that when your sports are succeeding, it, it's, it's better for the overall, it's better for the athletic department. And these are the sports that need this need to succeed and make a lot of money for the program or for the university and, and the athletic department. So I'm excited. Um, you know, I think it's, it's going to be fun. And I'm, you know, it's one game at a time and it's a new season for us. And, you know, we had a little rough patch the last month. So I'm just ready for us to click on all cylinders and get hot like we did last year. At the beginning of the year, Jed Fish was saying that there was a friendly wager between you guys who would lose the first game asked to buy dinner. Is no, there going to be Coach Lloyd? Coach, did I say Yeah, you said Jeff. My bad. I should have bet him too, but <laughs> this season, yeah, he <laughs> plays less games. I should be like. Will there be a friendly wager to see who goes further? I'm not betting right now because they're doing, they're rolling too much. Let me wait till next year and see who I have and see who he is because right now he's a little hotter right now. <laughs> I'm glad I didn't bet him for the second half of the season. I bet him in the right time. I bet him when we were rolling, right? No, um, it was just fun. And, and it, you know, it was, it was like a joke because you don't want to bet that, but we were both doing so well. And it was, I just kind of threw it out there as a joke, but it wasn't really like a serious bet. It was just kind of talking crap, you know? I know you said one game at a time, but when you see South Carolina and Don Staley there in that same bracket, what are your, what are your thoughts about that? Um, my thoughts are, oh, that's awesome. Um, you, you know, I think, I think it comes to the point where everybody's beatable. I think if you would have sat down and looked at our bracket last year, everybody would have, I mean, even us, we were like, oh, great, UConn. You, like when you see UConn. So I think that it is what it is. Um, it's one game at a time. If you don't play well the first game, like is a good team, you don't even need to think about that. So I think obviously you don't want the number one team in the country in your bracket, that's obvious. But I think right now, if, if we got to that point, I think you let the chips fall as they may. Like last year, we were like, okay, we play UConn. UConn was better. They only won 11 more championships than we did. And they had only been there like a thousand more times. So it's like, at that point, what do you have to lose? There is like zero pressure for Arizona. And there was zero pressure last year. So I think that's the best way to play. That's the easiest way to play. I think it's a lot harder. And I felt some of that this year. Nothing like what Don feels. Um, it's hard when you're like supposed to win games. Like you're going in the game supposed to win games. I, I th think it's hard, but she's got a really good team. And she's a really good coach. So. I think um, if we get to that point, I think that you just kind of go out and play, and what do you have to lose? Because you're not supposed to win that game. So. Two more questions. Do you think being a four seed kind of like lo lowers your underdog status a little bit? Um, well, you, you know, honestly, what I think about the four seed, um, I, I was happy given our situation, like completely grateful, happy. Um, but like as a coach and a competitor, I was like, we could have been a better seed. So if we would have done the things that we needed to do, and if we would have stayed healthy and took care of business, we could have been a two or a three. So, which is more favorable, obviously, in the bracket. But I like our, I like our draw. I like who we were matched up against. And, um, you know, when I looked at the other brackets, like, uh, it's going to be tough in a lot of brackets. 
Like, I mean, Stanford's got a tough one, so nothing's easy. So, um, you know, I just wish that we would have done a little bit better at in the t like times we didn't we didn't do well, and just um, you know we could have been in a little bit better situation. But I'm not complaining because we're fourth and it is and we're at home, so it's great. But I think that a learning lesson just in the future is those games like the Colorado game. You know that you, you know you're, you're a higher seed, you're supposed to win, um, and then you don't. Like those things affect all of these things. So then you saw that with Baylor today. You know, Baylor would have got a number one seed. You lose, you get the two. And so those things, like in the tournament, they matter. Because like playing someone a couple seeds lower is very different. But um, at that point, it's one game at a time. So I think anybody can win any game. I think we'll see a lot of upsets around the country. And do you, um, there's people already kind of looking ahead to Iowa and South yeah, Carolina. Saw, yeah. what, what, what do you think when you're in that bracket and they're talking about um, don't even think about that. I don't even, like, if they start talking about us and someone else, I, I don't even listen. Um, I think that it's hard winning your first game. This isn't a team that has a tremendous amount of experience. I know Kate's been there, Sam, our starters, Kate, Sam, are the two starters, and Bendu, that have been there, but our team is very different. Um, we're, we're built different, we're, um, you know, we're scoring different, defending different, so I think that it's by committee for sure. Um, you know, we don't have an Ariel McDonald or an Aaliyah Boston or a, you know, Caitlin Clark. We don't, we don't have that, which is good and bad. But I think that um, for us, it's very important to not to narrow our focus and just think about UNLV. I think that we won't be good if we do anything else. And I, I think that's something I'm going to stress, like to not look ahead, don't read that stuff, don't think about it, because if you don't do it, it's one and done. It's not like the Pac-12 where you know if you lose, you're going to still play in a tournament. Wait, could we lose, we're going home. So definitely have to get us like kind of in tune. And some of the people in the program, it's their first time going. So they don't know what it's like. They don't know what it feels like. It's different pressure. It's it's going to feel different. Mikhail, it's not going to feel like Mikhail's ours. I know it is ours, like in a sense that like we know we're familiar, but like we don't have, we don't get to pick our practice times. We don't get to pick our length of practice. We can't go shoot extra. So it's going to feel a little bit different. Um, and I think that the stakes are high and the pressure is on, so we're going to see what we're made of. We're either going to get clicking or get packing. So, <laughs> so I prefer to get clicking and, and get things right. And, and like Kate's just coming back. So that's great, but it's also an adjustment, right? So, um, but I think we're definitely better. And even if we are psychologically, that's a big part of the game too. So just having her back and her presence and her aggressiveness, like she looked great all week. Um, she scrimmaged all week, contact all week. She's looking good. Obviously, the first couple of days, her wind was a little down because she was working out, but she wasn't like in our scrimmages. And then today, she was in it the whole time. She's feeling good. So, you know, we need her. And we're, we're a lot better with her. And, and we all know that. And we, like, we all were waiting for her to come back. So I, I really like our chances with any game a lot better when she's back. So. Okay, cool. Thanks, you guys. Thanks for coming.